Hi everyone and welcome to your Supports and Accommodations presentation for MSTEP Science and Social Studies Assessment. For those of you who might not know my voice, I'm Jen Paul. I'm the Accessibility and English Learner Assessment Specialist at the Michigan Department of Education in the Office of Educational Assessment and Accountability. Our topics for today are to review the MSTEP Supports and Accommodations Framework for you and for me to be able to provide you with at least enough information to get you started in preparing for the MSTEP Science and Social Studies Assessments. Let's start with the framework. All tools that I'm going to talk about today are going to be categorized into one of three groups. This is the Supports and Accommodations Framework that I am referring to or that I just discussed in what we're going to be talking about today. Our definitions of these categories, however, are going to vary by assessment. So it's important for you to know that because what I talk about today in terms of the definitions is not necessarily going to hold true for the SAT, for the ACT, etc. All of our assessments to some degree are slightly different in terms of the definitions, but also what things are actually categorized in each one of these buckets. So you just have to know to be very careful and read our documentation um, so that you're not making, making mistakes when you decide to offer certain accommodations or supports or universal tools to students. But let's start with our M-STEP categories. The first is universal tools. These are things that are going to be available to all students. And the use of these things is primarily student driven. What that means is that a student can choose to use the tool, whatever it might be, whenever they would like. An example of this for a online test for MSTEP would be an, um, the embedded highlighter tool. The embedded highlighter tool is always on, always available to students. And as I just mentioned, th this is a tool that a student can use whenever they'd like. It's totally dependent on them to use it during the test whenever they so choose. Our next category, designated supports, is a little bit more stringent. These are things that are only going to be available to students who have a specific need, and the use is primarily educator driven. So some one, some group of educators has decided at the local level that a student would really truly benefit from the use of that support. And the use of that support is something that the student is using on a regular basis in the classroom. An example of this might be for an English learner student, a bilingual word-to-word -word glossary. That's something that, of course, not all English learners need or would even benefit from, but it's certainly something that some English learners might benefit from, and that decision would have to be made at the individual student level. The last category is accommodations. This is a category of tools that is only going to be available to students with disabilities, and furthermore, not just students with disabilities, but only students with disabilities who have that specific accommodation outlined in their IEP or 504 plan. Let's go through some frequent areas of confusion related to this framework if you've never seen it before. Let's start with this first one. These are all gonna be true or false statements. So as I read them, think about whether or not the statement is true or false and then I'm going to explain it. Students with IEPs can't use universal tools or designated supports. So based on the information that I just shared with you, is that a true or a false statement? This is actually a false statement. Students who have IEPs are eligible to use anything from any category. As long as that need is documented for the student and they really do have a need for it, then sure, they can use any of those tools, no problem. They are not limited. Here's another one. Students with IEPs can use a universal tool or designated support 
if it's not identified in their IEP. This is actually also a false statement. Students with IEPs should have everything that they need that's identified, everything that they need identified in their IEP or 504, even if that's something that's listed as a designated support. Here's another one. Only English learners can use designated supports. This is also a false statement. The category of designated supports, as I mentioned, is a category that's open for any student as long as an educator or group of educators has made a decision that that student needs that support. A student does not have to be identified formally as an English learner, as a student with disabilities. It, they don't have to be formally identified in, in any way to use one of these supports. And our last one, students who receive extra classroom support for reading can use designated supports if appropriate for their needs. This one is true, and this is similar to what I was just saying about the third bullet point, that again, designated supports are really truly for any student as long as educators at the local level have determined that this is beneficial for the student and it's something that they use frequently in the classroom. All right, let's talk about preparing for testing before I start giving you a whole lot of information about supports and accommodations. To prepare for testing, our recommendation is to create processes for the following areas. You should review which tools students are using in the classroom. Perhaps this can be done through a meeting, through a virtual meeting. You might also create a shared document to track the tools that are needed for assessments. But the bottom line here is you're likely going to need to start having some discussions with your colleagues about what students are using in their classrooms and what it is that even individual students might need. And the only way to do that is to talk to your colleagues so that you can get that information. You also need to ensure that there's a match between what is used in the classroom and what will be used on the state test. Sometimes there isn't an exact match, but you need to try and get as close as possible. You should also review the supports and accommodations guidance document. This is your manual. This is your sidekick. This is your absolutely go to document whenever you've got questions about what supports and accommodations are available on our state assessments. It should have most of the information in it that you need. You are also going to need to identify staff who are going to be responsible for inputting designated supports or accommodations into the online testing systems. That's a step that certainly has to be taken care of. It's not the case that the system already knows what supports and accommodations students might need to have access to. You might know that at the local level, but someone actually has to put that information into DRC's online testing portal. And another thing that you will need to do if you are preparing for testing and certainly going to be coordinating some of these activities is identifying staff who are going to be serving as human readers perhaps, in-person translators, or even scribes. Anybody serving in these capacities must review and use the appropriate guidelines in the Supports and Accommodations Guidance document. There are guidelines that these that these roles or people in these roles need to follow. And those guidelines are in the Supports and Accommodations Guidance document. As you are preparing, also make sure, and I think I've, I just alluded to this a minute or so ago, you've got to ensure that you are considering students' individual needs. Do not make blanket decisions for 
students that are in whole grade levels, in whole buildings, or even in a whole district. So for example, if you decide to turn on text to speech for all of your students in a district or in a building or in a grade level, that will likely set off a flag on our side and you may receive a phone call from me to discuss the rationale behind enabling that type of support for all of your students. Providing students with more than they need or know how to use effectively can negatively impact their scores. This is something to keep in the back of your mind as you're making decisions for what students should use on the assessments. It is not the case that you should throw absolutely everything at the student and it is a guarantee for them doing better on the test because it's not. So just keep that point in mind. And the opposite side of that is that if you don't provide students with what they need, that can also negatively impact their scores. So there are two sides to the coin here. Giving them more than they need could negatively impact their scores, and also not giving them what they need can certainly negatively impact their scores. So how do you go about actually making some of these decisions? I'll encourage you to start with some of the big questions. You may have students that have a disability impacting their vision. Do you know who those students are at this point in time? Do you know if you have students that have a disability impacting their hearing? Do you have students that require an audio presentation of text? Who are your English learners and what types of supports might they need? Do you have any students that may need help maintaining their concentration during the assessment? Let's start, however, with whether or not the student has a disability impacting their vision. We have a really nice guide that's available for educators, the M-STEP guide for teachers with students who are visually impaired to help you think through what is available for students on the M-STEP assessment, and therefore it'll help you better plan for the testing. So if you click on this link, if you click on that link, M-STEP guide for teachers of students who are visually impaired, it'll take you to this nice guide that talks about, as I just mentioned, many of the options for students who may have visual impairments. Test timing, color options, masking, magnification, enlarged print, braille options, text-to-speech, in-person human reader, hotkeys or keyboard shortcuts, and then gives you some additional information such as where to go to try out the tools so that your students have an idea of what to expect when they sit down and actually take the test. Does the student have a disability impacting their hearing? Again, we have a really nice guide, just like the one that I showed you that's available to discuss this topic. We also have guidelines and guidance on making decisions for text-to-speech and read-aloud. That is not a standalone document as the other two were, but this guidance lives in the Supports and Accommodations Guidance document. Another standalone option for you to consider and review is the, is the student identified as an English learner? For students that may need help maintaining concentration, you should also consider masking options. That is a designated support. Masking is an option within the system that allows a student to place a resizable solid color box over portions of the screen that may be distracting to them. 
Students can have additional time if they need it. This is not categorized as a universal tool designated support or accommodation, but is actually just an allowable administration option. And then you could also consider doing one-on-one -on -one or purposeful small group administrations. And that's considered a universal tool, so something that could be available to every student. Some other things that you should be aware of that could help in your planning. We do have some tools that you can use at the individual student level. Uh, the accessibility supports in the classroom tool is a great way to mark up a student's needs on paper. Let me show you what that looks like. So this again is available at the student. You could have one of these for every single student. The table then on this document would allow you to take notes about what information may be in a student's instructional plan, when does the student use that type of tool, the frequency with which they use it. This would be a really intensive deep dive at a student level, but again could be useful to you in your planning. And then the other document that is noted on this slide is the tracking sheet for supports and accommodations. This document is a downloadable spreadsheet that's available on our website. And as you'll see here at the bottom of this Excel sheet, there is a tab for every single content area and assessment. And this would allow you to keep track of individual students that may need supports and accommodations. So the student's name can be listed in each row and then you can identify and check mark what a student may need. This would also be helpful from year to year if you set up a structure like this. You would have one for 2021, you would have one for 2022, etc. You could just copy the list for a new year and then make any updates or changes. And this could also then be used for inputting the information into the online testing portal. Let's spend a little bit of time talking about text-to-speech since this is the most frequently used support and accommodation. There are actually two types of text-to-speech options available for, available for MSTEP. And the availability of each type is going to differ by content area and grade. You do have a designated support option for text-to-speech and you'll notice that it is called text-to-speech in the system. There is also a accommodation option. This is called text-to-speech passage in the online system. The designated support option for text-to-speech is available for English language arts, mathematics, science, and social studies. For science and social studies, it will read the questions and answer options for students. There are no reading passages on the mathematics, science, or social studies assessments. So it will read aloud to the students for science and social studies, whatever it is on the screen that can be read aloud. For science and social studies, as I just mentioned on the previous slide, there is no accommodation option. So you don't really need to worry about it for science and social studies purposes. However, again, the accommodation option, text-to-speech passage, is something that's only going to be available for English language arts and only available for students in grades six and seven. Something new for MSTEP 2021 is what we're calling continuous magnification. This is an option for students that actually retains the magnification between screens. So if this option is not enabled, a student may choose to turn on the magnification on one screen, on one test question, but then when they go to the next test question, the magnification is gone and the student would have to turn it on again if they needed it. So if you have a student who absolutely needs this for every single test question, you should consider the continuous magnification option, which would allow your student to not have to reselect the magnification op option tool 
on every single test question. We do have another option available for text-to-speech. Text-to-speech for directions only is also available now. Some things to think about specifically for 2021 are, of course, COVID considerations. Just try to keep in mind that you should use what the student is most comfortable with and has been using during instruction this year. It's very possible that the way that you've been instructing them, the types of supports that they've been actively using, if they've been learning from home for the last year, it may be different than what you're used to providing in the classroom on a normal basis, but that does not mean that at the time of the assessment, you should start adding in those things that the student has not been using for the previous, for this school year. If you have any questions about what is available or you need help in determining which supports might be best for students, you can certainly always email myself at mde-oeaa at michigan.gov. And as always, please make sure that you refer to the Supports and Accommodations Guidance Document. It really truly does have the vast majority of information that you're going to need. So between myself and that guidance document, you should have everything you need to be able to support your students well on the upcoming state assessments. Thank you.